Welcome, Amanda. It's a pleasure to have you here. Oh, thank you for inviting me. I'm really looking forward to this afternoon. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this session as well, because we have chosen such an important topic for today. <laughs> learning how to say no for less stress. Everybody on this planet can benefit from learning how to say no a bit more effectively so. than, than they are doing currently. <laughs> so a huge welcome to you. We are going to get into the topic that we have chosen for today, but why don't we start with who Amanda is? Tell oh. us what is your story? Absolutely. And a lot of my journey is wrapped up in, um, to start off with my inability to say no, which was, um, it's a theme that runs quite strongly throughout my career. And I think it's fair to say growing up, um, I was really a people pleaser uh, and I'll touch a bit of, on a bit of this later and I always used to think you know I was somebody who loved school loved doing well loved to please people really always wanted to be that person that everybody thought of well as I was growing up you know everybody used to say including my mother oh Amanda's so well behaved you know she's always this she's was that and very you know helps around the house, does everything. And, you know, little did I realise at the time when I got into the world of work, in a sense, that might be my undoing. So to cut a long story short, I had quite a long career in terms of mainly in education, started off in finance and then kind of moved into education when I'd gone back to do my degree. And it was only, I suppose, I became more senior, so got promotion without roles, kind of kept, even when I was in one university, would move up two or three rungs, you know, I was really enjoying getting into management, you know, working at a really strategic level, networking, not just within the UK, but globally, traveling a lot with my role, you know, somebody from the outside looking in would say, oh, you must love what you do, it's really amazing. And I did love it because I love education. I love education as a learner myself. And I purely believe that through learning, you know, we can transform our lives, which is why I got into it in the first place. But I suppose behind the scenes, life was becoming, I think it's fair to say a bit difficult. And during this time, obviously it's 20 or so years, you know, things were changing for me personally. I had a family, so I've got three children who are all actually more grown up now. So they've gone through education themselves. And I think it's fair to say, as the roles got more senior, I the people pleasing element of me never really went away. It kind of, I like to say the voice became a bit quieter. And in some of the more senior roles, you know, it's often the way you take on a new role, you're learning how to do it, you're dealing maybe with some of your own mindset issues while you're doing this, and you're also juggling. And you think, okay, I want people to see me in a positive light. I want to prove that I'm capable. So, you know, especially if I'm promoted internally, that people who have faith in me were doing that for the right reasons. And that just led to a bit of an inability to say no effectively. I'd be the person that would sit there and say to myself, yeah, I can take that on. Yeah, that's no problem. That, that, there was a running joke that that was my, my favourite phrase. That's no problem. I'll sort that out for you. When immediately afterwards, I would say, yeah, no problem. In my head, I'd be saying, why did you say yes to that? <laughs> I'd be sitting there thinking to myself, I've already got a diary that's heaving at the seams. How am I possibly going to manage to do this? So again, you know, subsequent promotions. This still hadn't left me at this point. It was still there, nagging away in the background. So the answer was just keep working more. I felt sometimes, some days like I was on that proverbial treadmill. And, you know, 50, 60 hour weeks were the norm. I think the family were, they probably want to stick a picture of me up there thinking, where's she gone this week? You know, because we've barely seen her. And when she does, she flips open the laptop and she's there typing away, still trying to play catch up. And people often say that something has to change, something big has to change in your life to have that shift. Well, in some senses, that choice got taken away from me because I suffered with burnout. Not only once, but twice. So it wasn't even like I'd learned my lesson after it happened the first time. And I think when you're in the middle of that, it can feel incredibly difficult. But in some ways, it was transformative for me because when it happened for the second time, that was when I hit the reset button and 
I was in some senses quite fortunate that the organisation I was working for at the time, I was in a very senior role, was going, they've been going through a lot of restructuring, some of which I've been leading on. And there was a final opportunity to take voluntary severance. And I didn't even think about it that long, which was telling me something. Signed on the dotted line, you know, was, was going to get, shall we say, a healthy payout to soften the blow. And then immediately started doubting myself and thinking, what have I done? I've not got another job to go to. Which then led to me some, doing something I'd always wanted to do, which was setting up my own business. And initially it was going to be around, you know, more of consultancy work, leadership, um, change management, a lot of what I'd done. But the more I thought about it and reflected on my own problems, and I suppose that in a sense, the people pleaser in me wanting to help others, not letting people get into that same trap, led me down a route of also mentoring and coaching. So that was kind of running as a bit of a sideline. And the first year in the business was very good. You know, I think a lot of my network really helped me. But then I realised I was in some ways recreating a bit of a different trap. I was long hours were starting to creep back in again. It was OK, stop. It was at that point I got myself a business coach and I think really reflected on where I wanted to take that business long term. And actually, that was where the productivity and well-being really came into it, you know, and how that could have an impact. And not just about, you know, for everybody here has probably read a million and one books, you know, how you can get more done in, in the same time. To me, that wasn't what productivity was about. It was about buying you freedom. So freedom to feel like you have a balanced life freedom to spend time with your family on your hobby you know to focus on your well-being do all of those things you want to do other than just work so that was what it became about for me and I suppose now my practice has really morphed into having that at the heart of it so it isn't just about a productivity hack or a way to do it easily so much of it is around mindset so the way we think, the way we view, my example at the beginning of, you know, growing up as a people pleaser and that never really leaving me. It's addressing, if you like, those lowest self-limiting beliefs to really get you where you need to go. And quite often the productivity then follows. You know, people will come to me and say, I've read a book or, um, you know, about James Clear, Atomic Habits. Why can't I be like James Clear? Why can't I get those things done? And quite often when you, you unpack, pick and unpack those conversations with them, it is about those mindset and those limiting beliefs that come into play. And quite often when we work on those and we begin to unravel that, that's where the magic happens. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. This story resonates so much with me ah. because I grew up in an environment where saying yes was rewarded so as a yes. child I just took on that story that um, if I would say yes to everything and make everything work yes I would be rewarded for it I my behavior would be approved of by the authority figures of my life my parents my teachers whoever and I was the youngest in, in my family so it was a learned behavior and it had its place. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All that love was, well, I would say a lot of times uh, I did get a bit of extra love, a bit of extra admiration mm -hmm. and approval. But no, in the long term, it's, it's such a horrible place to be in when you keep saying yes to everyone else and you aren't saying yes to yourself. Yeah, you you do it at the expense, like say, of, of your own well-being. And yeah you know, how I used to feel about it. Like you say, you, you're always seen as that kind of, you know, that easy person to get along with. You never kick up a fuss. You kind of go with the flow. You know, you're, you're always that person everybody looks to if you're in a group of friends or within your family unit. I was the eldest. So actually some people would say you might have been kind of, you know, doing things a different way. But no, yeah. I'm, I was the eldest. There's only myself and my brother. But I, I very much took that view, you know, that was what, what I needed to do and to be the person who was easy to get along with, to not always think about my own boundaries and where I wanted those to be. And even if I did have a boundary, 
I wasn't very good at communicating it to anybody else. I, I might think I'm going to set a boundary and I'm not going to let people do it X, Y and Z. But I was never very good at telling anybody else that because when it came to that bit, that was where it became difficult. And I didn't want to upset anybody. I didn't want to seem difficult or, you know, pushy. So I would go straight back into people pleasing mode. And it was pointless having those boundaries because nobody else but me knew about them. <laughs> yeah, if you don't tell people, how exactly. would they know? Yeah, exactly. Mm. There was one thing more from your story that really resonated with me because I had put myself in that trap as well. The trap that you talked about moving away from, from the job and setting yeah. up your business and recreating the same hamster wheel. Absolutely. I did that too. <laughs> it's so easy to fall into, isn't it? It's so easy. It's it's so easy. And I got to a point wherein I realized that I had got out of one kind of rat race, which was the corporate world, yeah. and stepped onto another one, which was the world of entrepreneurship. And then I said, oh, my God, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> it, it, like, say, it happens. And I wouldn't say to me, I don't know about yourself, it didn't happen overnight. It was kind of gradual over that first year of business. And it wasn't until I looked, I thought, oh, Oops. It, it was literally one of those moments yeah. where I just thought, what have I done? And I, and actually, even worse, I've done this to myself. Yes. <laughs> it's not even like I've got a really demanding boss who's done it to me. I've done it to myself. <laughs> <laughs> that's the worst bit, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> and it was, that's kind of when it really comes back to you, because I think when I was, you know, working in very senior roles in some senses yeah a lot of the responsibility was mine and you know I had some very demanding um bosses at the time who probably didn't help the situation so you know it was more of an even split but actually this was something I'd done to myself I'd created my own prison if you like yeah yeah I think that's a beautiful way to put it creating our own prison yeah and that was so, how it felt yeah yeah yeah. And you probably walked away from that job because you wanted freedom. Mm, absolutely. And yet you were in a different kind of prison. Yeah. And it's pe people say, I don't I suspect they may say it to you. They probably say it to a lot of people in this group. It must be brilliant working for yourself yeah. because you can choose when you want to work, when you don't want to work, who you work with, who, what you say yes to, what you say no to, which is fine. But I think, again, an element of that people pleasing came out of me in my first year of business. I really wanted it to be a success. I wanted I didn't want somebody to look at me and go, you know, Amanda left that really great role where she had all that status and salary and she did it for the right reasons. But now she's running a business and, you know, she's not quite making it. it it's kind of not quite paying its way. So I probably said yes to work in that year that now I wouldn't. I would I would look at it and go it doesn't shine with my values it's not important to me or actually I just don't have the time to do it it'd be lovely but not right now whereas in that first year I was kind of like we'll do all of the things we'll take everything on we'll be really busy to make the business a success not realizing that actually not giving myself that breathing space was going to be my undoing if I wasn't careful yeah, and that's something so powerful to realize, to understand that we have the freedom, we can choose who we work with, who we say yes to and no to, but we've got to have that discipline and that respect for our own boundaries. Absolutely. If that's not there, who else, the, the danger of being in business for yourself, who else is going to stop you? Who else is yeah. going to say no? Yeah. There's only you. Yes, absolutely. So we've got to learn to say no to ourselves first yeah and you know that's it's difficult I think it's such an emotionally charged word people find it so hard to say and I, th I think for me the, the moment when I kind of found it different and reframed it was thinking about what what will happen if I say yes tipping it almost on its head what will happen if I say yes, then I won't have time for this, this and this. Yeah. And it will mean that. And maybe, you know, a few minutes of discomfort in terms of saying no, obviously saying it in a way that feels authentic to me yeah. will help. 
it will help me. Whereas saying, saying yes, that might feel easy and it might feel good in the moment, but what's it gonna mean for me the next day, the next week, the next month, when I'm potentially living with the consequences of that? Yeah. I want to retrace our steps a little, little bit. And I want to understand from you, when you were in that mode on that hamster wheel where you were saying yes to possibly everything, apart from putting that physical and mental stress on you, how else did it show up in your life? It, it, it's just everything. Because when you haven't got the time and you haven't got the space, our old friend overwhelm kicks in. And you literally do not know where to turn first. You know, I think if you ever think about one of those days, there's, there's a saying, isn't there? If you want something done, ask a busy person, which is really unfortunate because, yeah, people usually do ask somebody that's accommodating, willing, and seems to get through a lot of work. But when you're thinking about that, you're taking on so much. And actually, instead of being more productive and getting more done, you find yourself in, in a trap again, almost. You're procrastinating, you're overwhelmed. You don't know where to turn first. Your ability to prioritize becomes really impaired. You can't actually be in a, in a focused state. I like to call it the difference between having a sharp focus and your focus being really blurred, like almost like there's a fog in front of your eyes. That's the way I would best describe it. And that, that impacts on all areas of your life. You know, it, it can be, if it's your business, that can be really detrimental. You're making maybe bad business decisions, bad personal decisions. You're not able to give everything the time and space it needs. Um, people go on a lot about work-life balance. And, you know, I'm, I won't deny there's some weeks when I've got a lot going on in the business, I might put in more hours. But then I'll know it's a bit like a, a set of scales. The next week, I'll probably do a bit less. There might be times when I'm busy or I'm launching something or working on a project where I know there's a lot at stake and I need to get through that, which is fine. But it's about that balance. And to me, it's not, a balance isn't about every day, you know, clocking on at nine, clocking off at five. Quite often as business owners, we don't always do that anyway. It's about that bigger holistic balance. So can you say, you know, at the end of every week, you've had enough time that you feel you need for everything. And that looks different for everybody. Have you had enough time to sleep? Have you had enough time to eat? Have you had enough time to exercise? Have you had enough time to look at your own well-being, mentally and physically? And have you got time for the things that matter to you? And that's not just your work and your business, your family, your hobbies, everything you enjoy that actually makes you a rounded person. And like I said, that doesn't need to be, you don't need to balance that scale every day to my mind you need to do it in a more holistic way that feels like it works, you know, longer term. So you're always kind of checking in and looking and thinking, how am I doing? You know, especially, I, I don't know about yourself, but somebody with a tendency maybe to overwork and to do a bit more than I should, I have to check myself. I have to check myself a lot. I'm, I'm always kind of, I suppose, reflecting. So I'll get to the end of each day. I find journaling is a great friend in this one. So I'm actually saying to myself, you know, how have I managed today? What went well? What didn't go so well? Kind of, you know, keeping on looking back at that before I go to bed, bed of a night, you know, I'll do myself my three things that I need to get done the next day. So I'm always kind of trying to think a step ahead to, if you like, protect my well-being, protect my energy and protect my focus, because actually without those things life's going to be incredibly hard you think you think you know I was speaking to somebody only yesterday about taking lunch breaks and they were saying I never do you know I just power through the day and keep going and I said well how do you feel by like three o'clock in the afternoon well I feel like I need to sleep why do you think that might be I know that when you're busy it's hard to think you know I need to put things down for half an hour an hour I just need to stop go outside in the sunshine, go for a walk, you know, just do something that's different because actually that will pay you back. It, it, it's again, like simple maths, it pays you back, you know, in terms of your own energy because it is about protecting your energy and that, that, that crosses your whole life. It's not just about work. Yeah, yeah. I love the message that you have there about protecting our own energy with a focus on long-term 
yeah. well-being. Yeah. And that is something that I had to understand for myself when I became a business owner, especially in terms of launches, because like everyone else, I was in that space wherein you go all in during a launch and it, it would get so busy and so stressful. And at one point I realized that, well, I plan on being a business owner for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And if I still continue screwing myself over <laughs> during every launch, then I'm just going to make life difficult for me. And I think if you're working with others as well, whether you, if you're in a training, a coaching, a mentoring role, it's even more important to protect that energy because you give so much to your clients. As well, I find I do. You know, like I can come to the end of a training session and I'll just feel, you know, oh. not like I've been running around the park or something, but I'll feel mentally and physically, I'll feel like, okay, I know that I need feeling. Yeah. Just switch off for the day now because I'm, yeah. I'm, my brain's kind of done because I think you give so much of yourself. You really care. What you do is really important to you and it's a giving type of role and that makes it to me even more important to protect that energy because not only have you got to be there for yourself and present for yourself you've got to be able to do that for your clients too yeah oh that that feeling that you just need to rest after a day-long workshop oh massive oh that's (laughs) that's huge (laughs) I remember when I used to travel and do it in person pre-COVID and I'd be on the way home so often it would be train journey back to somewhere and I would, I'd just think, I'd, I'd just love to have a little sleep right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> You're right. It is, it is such a giving kind of work. And this work demands undivided attention. We are so tuned in. Mm-hmm. We are listening so intently. We are being so present, taking into consideration, taking, taking on board things that are being said and things, are that, things that are not being said. Yeah, massively. And massively. it requires energy, all of it. You're, always, you're, you're in the conversation. I always say it's not like having you know, a, a normal chat with somebody. You're, you're literally you're looking for visual cues. You're listening to what somebody's saying. Yeah. You're trying to be a couple of steps ahead of them. You're thinking about the next question, you know, kind of while focusing that you need to ask to get that very best out of that conversation. And it's, it, like I say, it, it, it's tiring work, tiring yeah. mentally, I think. Yeah. You know, that, yeah. that to me means it's all the more important that, you know, you, you learn how to protect that energy, how to look after yourself. And to do that, you know, you, you can't pour from an empty cup, as they say. Yeah, and, you know, absolutely. It's, it's when that cup, you look in there and there's absolutely nothing. Mm. It, it's kind of too late. You've realised you've got that problem. Yeah. A lot of people I work with are very much, they're almost becoming on the brink of that. So it's about trying to go, OK, what can we do to stop that and try and pull ourselves back, back from the edge, if you like. Absolutely. So tell us, Amanda, what are some of the things we can start doing so that we can start setting those boundaries? We can start saying no to others and to ourselves so that eventually we can say yes to ourselves. The first thing is think about why you want to say no to somebody. Think about why. And people are going, well, that's easy because I don't want to do it. Well, no, it's not that easy. Um, you know, you've got your boundaries, you have all your projects, you've got everything going on. And like I said at the beginning, you know, it can be very much about wanting to please people, wanting to do the right thing, wanting to be seen to be capable. But think about what happens every time you say yes. So you're saying yes to something. You're taking on more work. This work's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and growing. And you be see, you're be seen as that person who always says yes. I'll ask Amanda because she very rarely says no. I'll ask Amanda because she always finds time to do it. She always manages to fit that work in. You know, when you're that person and somebody comes to you and they go, can I just run that past you? Or could I just pick your brain? Or I'm sure you could fit this in. And you're always that person who looks and you feel a bit uncomfortable. And then you go, yeah, it's it's no problem, okay. When in your head you're going, no, no, don't say that. say no. And you're like, yes. And the words are coming out of your mouth. And afterwards you walk away 
and you just you're absolutely living to regret it and I always say actually you don't owe anything to anybody in some senses and I think we were talking about boundaries earlier and if you know you people are not going to respect those boundaries one if you don't articulate them and two if you don't stay true to them you know I always say like yes and no and your boundaries are almost that internal compass it's what guides you it's your values it's what's important to you yes you, you, you can say yes to a project if you've got the time go for it but actually is it going to add value to your business is it going to add value to what you want to do? Is it important to you? No, you should always, when you're saying yes and no, be thinking about, especially if you're running your own business, about your own goals and where you want to take the business. You, are, I might have time to take on a piece of work, but I still might say no to it. It's not always a time thing. I might say no because actually it might not chime with my personal values. Um, it just might not be taking, you know, in some senses going where the business wants to go even sometimes I may not actually be interested in it it might pay really well it might look really good on the face of it but when I look a bit closer I think I'm just going to end up resenting that if I take that work on so it's always you know not don't look at your boundaries but coming back to that compass what's important to you in terms of your values what goals have you set how does that work or saying yes or no align with your goals as well? you know if you've got this goal for growing your business in a certain way during the, ne the next quarter or the next year, say, think about how saying yes and no is having an impact on that too. So it's always kind of, you know, holding them up there. But it's also about knowing your limits. How much can you do in a day? When, when we take things on, it's like when we make, I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of to-do lists, but that's for another day. I don't, don't like them and don't use them. I have different systems and I think a lot of my clients have felt quite trapped by them. But I often say that because we're really notoriously bad about predicting how much time it takes us to do something. I don't know about you, but I always use to be like, <laughs> oh this. my God. <laughs> I don't, it's going to take me an hour. It's fine. I can leave it till the last minute because it will take me an hour. You know, an hour and a half later, I'm still going and I'm like, why did I say I could do this in an hour? This, this is just silly. <laughs> and then you repeat the same behaviors again and it's like it keeps doing itself so you know again you're you're saying yes thinking you know you in your internal system is saying yeah I've got room for another project or um I've got room to do that presentation or write that report because it's only going to take me an hour or two hours or no know your own limits and name them you know, if you, you you should have a sense of kind of what your priorities are. And I would always say, if you think something's going to take an hour, I'd probably say it's going to take two or three. You know, if you, if, you, if you get that spare time back, that's a bonus. It's like a meeting finishing early, isn't it? That's a bonus. That gives you back that time. But you can't work it the other way. If you've already said yes and, and you've got too much to do, well, where are you going to go with that? If you've got, there's no way back. You've just got to keep going down the road that's putting in more hours yes you know that's even worse if you're a business that maybe bills on an hourly rate as well if you've underestimated your time not only is that going to be expensive to you mentally it's going to hurt your bank account too because you're working for free essentially so, yes. you know, so that's not a position anybody wants to get into and I think we're all going to feel uncomfortable you know some people are very good at saying no and they do it in a way, you know, that it's a second nature to them. They don't really need to think about it. They, they, but those people, I will say, have practiced it a lot. You may think on the face of it, they're just really assertive. They're really great at looking at their time. They're really great at making a, an internal decision and just going, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, and, and, that, and that's fine. But quite often they've worked on their mindset and they've practiced saying no in a way that feels genuine to them. And I, th I think that's really important. You know, you, you obviously you need to get your boundaries strong. You need to think about what your own personal boundaries are, because that's going to look different for every person. Nobody, you know, no two people's boundaries are the same. But I think what you have to say to yourself, is it worth, ask yourself the one question, is it worth me saying no? And answer that honestly. You know, what's the worth of it? 
I may feel, you know, I've got to psych myself up to saying no, and I've got to practice, and I've really got to think about how that's going to come out and how it's going to sound. But think about it. Is it worth it? Is it worth it mentally, physically, your business, your well-being, everything else? That's the one question you should always ask yourself. If you're going to commit to saying that no, you know, how's that going to look? And I think a lot of people are very worried. Am I going to get it right? Is it going to sound OK? You know, is it going to come out badly? You know, what what is going to happen? I always say the starting point for this is to have have your list. And this is a good list to have. It's a not to do list. So it's, it's not to do list. It's a not to do list. Think about it and review it regularly. Think about what you're going to say no to. And this is going to change over time. Yeah. What potentially you can delegate. And I will say, even as you know, a business owner, you may have capacity to do that. Or, you know, this was a game changer for me. Think about what you're going to outsource. So I, I don't do my own accounts. It me be, neither. It would be a disaster if I did that sort of saying. <laughs> it would not end well. Um, they're not my, numbers are not my strong point. You know, I now work with a VA who undertakes, you know, tasks. And actually, I've been growing the time I work with her because the more I use her, the more I see the benefits of it. We work really well together. So actually, she does more hours for me now. You know, it's, it's like a lot of things. You wouldn't try and fix everything in your business yourself. You know, if you, you pay somebody to come and clean your windows or clean your house or paint your lounge, you wouldn't try and do all of those things yourself. So it, it should be the same. And I get it's hard when you're starting a business. I was the same. I think an accountant was all I had because I knew I had to. All the other things I did myself. I became what I referred to as a CEO. And that wasn't being really important. It was a chief everything officer. Oh. I literally did everything. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, it's a brilliant one. It was, um, I, I literally, one of my friends said it and I'm like, I'm so pinching that because it described me in my first year of business. But then you need to get out of that mode because actually you can't grow and scale or develop your business if you're just doing everything. And yeah. actually my VA is much better at doing some things than I am. She does them much quicker. She does them better. You know, it absolutely pays for itself. Same with my accountant. So always have that list in mind. Think about those things and keep reviewing it. Keep thinking to yourself, what do I delegate? What do I outsource? What am I going to say no to? So how to get it right? Be direct. People don't like being direct when they speak to people. You know, don't, don't start going down a route. Some people go, maybe if I apologise, it will be easier. And maybe if I give um, a reason why I can't do it and start explaining myself, that will be easier. I would advise against that. I think you will make you will set yourself a trap because you start rambling. You start going, um, I've, I've done it before. Well, um, sorry, I'm really sorry I can't do that because I've got this other project to do um, and I've got that and, and there's this going on. And, and I'm really sorry I can't do it. And you can't you can feel yourself going oh, you're almost consuming yourself with your own thoughts so if you decided you're going to say no you know and I'll go on to this about how you can have have almost your own personal script for this in a minute say it just say no I can't and that doesn't mean you you don't have to be rude you know I'm sorry I can't right now you know or you know don't start apologizing and having this huge narrative as to why you can't do it just no I can't or actually, sometimes it will be, no, I don't want to. And people find that really hard to say. Yeah. Because saying I can't do it, or, you know, as opposed to I don't want to do it, people can find that harder to take. I, I've used I don't want to more now. You know, people will say, well, I know you've got time. And I know you really enjoy that project, but I don't want to. It doesn't fit with my personal values. It doesn't fit with where I'm taking my business. And, you know, what I quite often do in that circumstance is potentially suggest somebody else they might go and look at. I've got somebody else in my network, actually, who might really love that project. Their business is maybe at a different stage to mine. They might really love a conversation with you. You know, how about I pass on the details and you can have a chat with them. 
because they might think that's a great project for them. They might really enjoy it. You know, I've I found when I was in more senior roles, quite often I might say, well, it's not going to be something I'm going to do. But actually, I know somebody in my team who's looking for a development opportunity that's got the space right now. They would love to get involved with this project. Why don't you go and have a word with them? You know, I'll have a word with their manager. You go speak to them. And quite often when you say that to people, they're like, ah, I know you don't want to do it, but I know there's still a way. It's kind of not the end of the road. And that's not always possible, but it can be a way. Don't lie. We've all done it, haven't we? We've said, um, you know, I can't do it because something's going on. I've got, I've got this thing that's happening. So I really, really can't. And you make, you've got like an excuse that you use. The trouble is when you lie to somebody, one, you might get found out but it's only going to lead to more guilt. And what you're trying to avoid feeling like here is guilty. You don't want to reinforce that feeling of guilt. By doing that, by lying, you are going to end up feeling guilty. I'll pretty much guarantee it. So don't. It might feel like it's easy to do at the time, but it's not going to help you long term. And always remember that it's like that, I always use the example, it's that short-term gain, you know, you know, you do it, you're doing it, you've got to do it. And actually you've got to get that gain long-term. It's going to be a bit of pain. You're not going to feel very comfortable saying it. It will get easier, but think about how it's going to benefit you. And think about how you'll feel if you say yes, when you don't want to. Those feelings of resentment, you know, that you've done the wrong thing. Again, they're just going to reinforce you constantly saying yes when it's inappropriate. And, you know, be, like I said earlier, be polite. Say, you know, thank you for thinking of me. Thank you for asking me. There's nothing wrong with saying that. You don't have to just go, no, I can't. You know, thank you. I, I say it to people I, you know, maybe don't want to work with. I might suggest somebody else and go, thanks for keeping me in mind. It was, you know, really nice of you to reach out and get in touch just because you know we're not going to work together now you never know if we might do in the future but it's all about practice so you know try and imagine a scenario when you're saying no either by yourself seems a bit crazy kind of stand there speaking to yourself but it works or do it with a friend somebody you can trust a friend or you know a colleague somebody in your network literally have practice conversations where somebody get, asks you something and you just practice saying no it, it can make you feel really comfortable you know you could even do it like we're doing it now over over a zoom call no just practice no no yeah so would you like to take on that project next week that i really really need you to do no and it, it makes it sound simple and people go, oh, but it's my friend, I can do that. Or, <laughs> yeah, but again, it's it's like saying no is like it's like lifting weights at the gym. It's developing a muscle. It's developing a muscle and something that then just becomes more automatic. It will feel uncomfortable to begin with. It's like anything, it has to become a habit. I say on average, what is it, 60 odd days to acquire a new habit? So don't give up too soon you've got to you've got to keep working on this the one thing you don't want to say as well the big trap door that everybody falls down is i'll think about it oh my god or, that's or so back, irritating and frustrating come back to, come back to me <laughs> next week and i'll have an answer for you because you don't because you don't want to say no yeah you just think i'll kick the can down the road yeah and actually that will help because it will soften the blow well no it won't because Somebody's just going to come back to you and go, have you thought about it yet? And are things going to have changed? You still probably don't want to do it, yeah. but you've just, you've just prolonged the agony really is all you've done. Yeah. And actually, I don't know about you, but think about how much more stress that's going to make you feel. That's exactly thinking, what I was thinking. <laughs> all you're going to think is next week, that person is going to come back to me and they're going to ask me, well, have you thought about it? And they're probably thinking that, yeah, that they do want to do it. They're just kind of mulling it over. You know, they're, they're going to say yes to me. They just need a bit of time to think about what they've got going on. And then imagine if you've got to say no. That's just going to be a whole lot worse. And you've built up this situation. And again, you've done it of your own making. When yes. you could have said no and grasped that nettle and said it and felt a bit uncomfortable 
you know, for a short while. Now you've probably had a whole week of feeling stressed and worried about, you know, when that person's, which they will, they will come back and they will ask you again because you've said, I'll think about it. So would you like to do that project? And you say to me, I'll think about it. No. <laughs> you see, you're, you, if you know you're going to say no, say Do it now. Then. Don't prolong the agony. Hmm. And try and always remember that your self worth doesn't depend on how much you do for others. You know, and it, it can be really hard when we're in a new role or again we're starting our you know new business to think the more I'm doing, the more people I'm dealing with, the more I'm taking on. You know, people will then think of me in a really great way. They'll think Amanda's brilliant. She works so hard. She always delivers. She always gets things done. Isn't that great? But it's about our own self-worth. And if we're, if we're always hooking that back to what we do for others, where it's the work context, the personal context, that is probably not a healthy way to go. And it certainly won't help you have the confidence and the ability to say no in the longer term. Again, it, it just becomes a mindset issue that you will struggle to deal with. And, you know, it, it's got to feel right for you. When, when you say no to somebody, it has to be genuine. I always say, you know, I could give you a script. I could tell you this is how to say no when you really don't want to do something or you just haven't got the time. But actually... I think intuitively, I, I think most of us do, we've got that inner voice that tells us when something is a yes or a no. And the problem arises when we start arguing with that inner voice and what it's trying to tell us. And I think with some people, I, I used to struggle with this. You're really, you have to tune into that intuition. You kind of almost have to be in that state of mind where you're listening to what that voice is telling you. So I would always say you practice, give attention to that voice. Think about how you feel in the moment. You know, mindfulness can be a really good friend to you here. And a lot of people say I struggle with meditation and I can't do that. And I, it's not always about meditation. It's just pay attention to your thoughts and feelings in the moment. You know, think about how, it's, how it feels when you say no, when you say yes. And when you're saying yes, when you should be saying no. Think about how that feels internally, you know, not, not just on a kind of surface level, but almost tapping back into that intuition that some people call it a gut feeling, don't they? It's really, really important because actually, you know, that that can help guide you. And you're going to have to tolerate, you know, you have to become a bit braver here. You're yes. going to have to be able to tolerate the reactions of others because when you set boundaries, potentially it's going to unleash emotions, you know, not just your own emotions, but others around you. If people are used to you being the person that says yes, and all of a sudden, you know, because you've been working on this, you start saying no more. How do we think they might react? It's, you know, it can lead to anger. It can lead to disappointments. You know, when you set boundaries with people, you're not always going to have a pleasant reaction. People react in a way that's, you know, why can't you? And you really let me down and I'm really disappointed in you. It's kind of all those phrases that stir those negative emotions. But that doesn't mean you can't maintain those boundaries. And again, it's, I think it was saying at the beginning, it's no use having your boundaries if you don't articulate them to others. Yes. And everybody I know that's, you know, I kind of, I suppose, look up to or, you know, think about in a very positive way. Actually, they've got very strong boundaries mm. and they're not scared to articulate them. And they, they do it. They don't do it in a way that feels, you know, rude or, you know, aggressive. They do it in a way that's actually quite firm and they're clear about why they have those boundaries and where that line is. You know, it, it's not it's not a wiggly line that you can just push and pull. It's a very firm line. And I think in terms of saying yes and no, it has to be. You can't say, well, I'm, you know, I'm, I might just give this time because I think it's going to be OK. And then find out you've got yourself into a problem. And then before you know it, you're saying yes even more. So, you know, it's it can for some people. It can lead to that sense of bitterness 
or resentment. But sadly, I think it's quite often about surrounding yourself with those people who are going to respect your boundaries as well. Yeah. You know, having those people in your life who will respect that. They'll see that as a positive thing that you have boundaries and you hold them and you're not afraid to tell people what those look like. I think you find over time, I know I have the sort of people you want to work with, the sort of people you want in your life, accept yeah. that. They become accepting of those boundaries. You know, they might initially feel a bit upset or a bit disappointed, but they grow to respect you for having those values. I think, and you know, I will say, how can you practice self-care and, and do that if you don't have those strong boundaries? But like anything, saying no is about the strategy. It's about knowing in advance so you've not got to stop and think because we all know what it's like. When we have any new habit, it's like eating healthily, I like to describe it as. So what happens if you've got a load of chocolate biscuits and cakes and things in the house? And you suddenly feel you know, a bit hungry or you've had a bit of a stressful day and, and the food is kind of your comfort blanket. You're going to go straight off. I know I would and think I'm just going to have a couple of those biscuits and a cup of tea. If I've not got them in the house, <laughs> they're not there. I, I can't turn to that. I've got to then put my shoes on, um, get my purse and go for a walk to the shop to go and buy some biscuits. And actually, by the time I've got myself that organised, I'd be like, I probably didn't really want them anyway. The moment has passed. It's passed quite quickly. So having that strategy, really, where you don't have to keep stopping and thinking. You don't have to think about what you're going to say and how you're going to say it when you're turning somebody down. Some people write email templates or they even write a script. They have a little script to think. Again, this is where you can practice with a friend. What am, I, what am I going to say when I say no? How am I going to say it in a way that sounds authentic to me? And um, these are the exact words I'm going to use. And people go, well, that, that's crazy. You know, why would you write a script down? Again, because you're not thinking about it. It's not taking you energy to have to dip back into your brain and think, oh, oh Lord, they've asked me. How am I going to say no? Oh, I don't want to seem rude. That's where your script helps you or your, or your email template. You're just able to go, no. That, that, that's what I'm doing it becomes you know it, it, it becomes a more natural thing and, and people always say that's great when you work for yourself but what if you've got a manager that's always asking you to do more than you should that's then about conversation you know you're talking to your manager going okay so you need me to do x but you do know I've already got you know y and z and that's they've got these deadlines and that's what I'm already working on you know maybe you can help me have a look at some of my priorities if you want me to take this extra thing on because it's again about being able to articulate your constraints it's not about just saying yes and then you realize a week later you crash and burn because you can't get all your deadlines done it's about again having that conversation with somebody you know, not going no I can't I can't because I, I get that could be hard I've worked for people who that could be really hard with but quite often the way I would deal with that is having that conversation you know you're saying to them seeking their opinion so i've got these three pieces of work if you give me a fourth piece yeah i can take it on but kind of what's going to give because they've yeah. all got deadlines and you need me to do them all you know then they might say well actually yeah not, you know i get that's going to be too much i need to give something to or actually stop doing that project because that's not very important i need you to take this one on instead and, you know again it's a kind of a sense of negotiation and actually when you're doing that you haven't actually said no but you've kind of said it without saying it you're saying I don't just want to take on that extra work but I'm, I'm gonna have that conversation mm. and always think about examples of why you find it hard to say no you know, why did you find it hard and where in the conversation did you find it difficult so you know think about if you've had that conversation where was the part where you caved in and said no no you said yes where was the, where, when did that exact moment happen? And what did maybe the other person say that made you do it? You know, is it your guilt kicking in? Is it the people pleasing? What kicked in at that moment that made you change your mind? Because I don't think anybody ever sets out to say yes all the time. I really, really don't. 
No. They, they go, next time that person asks me, I'm going to say no. And it's about analysing, being in the moment again and thinking, when, when, did, when did I change my mind and what made me do it? But quite often for me, it was guilt. I, d- I didn't want to feel like I was letting somebody down. Mm. So I get to the point where they'd say certain things that would make me go, okay, yeah, I'll do it. Even though in my head I'm going, no, no, no. <laughs> and the lights are flashing. And I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. And then, you know, Because that guilt was kind of kicking in. And that's where you're creating that script. Because if you know where that weak spot is, and you know that point where you're likely to, your resolve is likely to collapse, that's where you need it to be strong. And quite often it's about that self-knowledge. You know, maybe work, again, work through it with a friend. Mm. You know, it might be something that you do with a coach, to be honest. But if not, work through with a friend. Just, you know, practice a few different scenarios and think about exactly when that moment happens. Because that will then help you write that script. It will help you have, if you like, I refer to it as scaffolding. You've got that scaffolding around that you will help keep your results strong when you when it really matters when you really need to say no and to push back it's it, it's about having strategies i always yeah. say i liken it to a toolkit they're things you can draw on when you know it, it's it's going to be tough for you to do something oh i love the simplicity with which you explain to us how we could say no let's see if we can recap some of those points, because there was so much goodness in what you shared. Thank you for that. So people keep it simple. Absolutely. Keep it simple by, first of all, understanding what is important to you, whether it is aligned with who you are, whether it is aligned with your business, with your work, that's where it starts. Don't lie if you don't want to. Well, don't lie because that doesn't work and you're going to get fine. It will never end well. (laughs) Yeah. Lying doesn't work because others are going to find you out and you're going to have this massive guilt afterwards and the job would still not be done. And it just makes it even harder for you to say no in the future. Yes. And it it spoils your credibility as well. Absolutely. And, you know, if you're always feeling like you have to make excuses for yourself and have to, you know, (laughs) lie about something, To me, I'd be asking myself at that point, why? Why do I feel that I've got to lie to get out of doing things? Yeah. You know, there must be a better way. I think quite often, and I've spoken to people who've done it, and their strategy was, you know, having a few white lies that they could tell that would get them out of doing things. And I'm like, how does that make you feel? And I find when you speak to somebody about that, they're like, well, not very good. And then there was that one, this one time when I got found out, and then everybody just, you know, it didn't do much for my credibility. It didn't do much for my self-worth. And it just made me feel even more guilty. And then I felt I was under pressure to say yes even more the next time somebody asked me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also loved what you said about uh, self-worth. Mm. Just because we are saying yes to others doesn't mean that it's going to help our self-worth. That is yeah. really important to understand. I loved what you said about the guilt. When we say yes, then we really want want to say no well we feel guilty that we put ourselves in that situation or we let other people down it's one big mess yeah it's one big mess i think that's the only way i can describe it and i loved how you explained to us that learning to say no is just like building a muscle the more you do it the easier it gets yeah and you find your own style you find what you're comfortable with it's like it's like anything you know, when you present, you find your own way of doing things, your own way of coming across. I always say, if you're doing anything like this, it's really important to find something that works for you, that you feel comfortable with, because at the end of the day, you're going to be the person saying it, that's authentic, that feels right and comfortable for you. And that's going to look different for different people, you know, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I think to me, I can always tell if somebody's speaking to me and it's coming from a genuine place. I, I don't know about you, I can always spot the difference. Yeah. 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 So, you know, it's it's about developing that that in-house style of how you want to say no. You know, and like yeah. I said, not apologizing. There's all of those things that you know you shouldn't do. 
but then think about how you want that to work for you yep. you know practice and practice. it seems it seems crazy you know sitting there and you're talking to yourself or talking to a friend but actually find a friend who's got the same problem you both may be fine saying no really difficult practice together help each other or you can practice with yourself yeah or practice we, actually with somebody who's really good at saying no to they they're, they're mm. great people to practice they're like why did you just say yes and you know, <laughs> you can have a conversation and they'll go you'll go okay so how do you find it so mm. easy to say no and they might they might give you a few tips and that's not to say you know there'll be ones that you want to use but then at least you get to see how somebody else has done that and you might ask them you might go you know did you always find it easy to say no mm-hmm. I probably guarantee you they didn't they've, it's no. something like a skill like anything they've had to work on and develop it's people just think that you're almost you're almost creative with that ability some people are to say no I'm just not the sort of person who says no to people mm. why not and could you become that person yes it's I think when when somebody asks you that that's a powerful way to think about it could you could you become that person would you want to become that person and actually what benefits would that have for you if you Mm -hmm. did yeah yeah it ties back into how we see ourselves just how we want to be identified as Mm. for sure for sure and it's like I say I think for me it was somewhat of a game changer when I learned that yeah you know people might there might be that initial sense of disappointment when you say it to somebody it's not an easy word but actually look at the benefits try and look beyond that initial word look at what happens later Mm -hmm. and that's what makes the difference you know you're not you're not the person still sitting there at seven eight o'clock of an evening trying to finish things off because you said you know yes to things actually that you should have said no to yeah you've got time to relax and I would say most people would appreciate the honesty I would say so I mean again it, it's kind of using that ambiguous phrase and saying to somebody well I'll, I'll think about it I'll mm. on it you know if somebody's going to say no to me and that they can't I'd rather they tell me there and then yeah. I would rather and I would rather they say no to me Mm. then say yes and then struggle and and you know I come back a week later and go have you got that report done and they go oh, you know actually I had so much stuff to do and I just I just couldn't get it done and I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want to let you down well I'm likely to feel a lot more disappointed if there was some important stuff riding on that yeah. and now you tell me that you couldn't I just wish you'd said no to me at the beginning yeah and I get that might have been hard for you but actually later down the line is a whole lot worse yes when you absolutely. potentially let somebody down or you know something's gone wrong or you've missed a deadline it's the consequences and that that's why I like to say it's it's that that little short-term moment of maybe discomfort or you know not feeling great about what you've just said but then that that's only going to last a very short period of time yeah if you're not saying that consequences of saying yes when you shouldn't are a whole lot worse and that's what that that's what helped me focusing on that bigger picture rather than just those few words yeah there's so much wisdom in what you shared with us Amanda tell us how can people experience some of this goodness (laughs) well there's a few ways they can do it I have um two weekly newsletters that I do now so I have one that I do on Friday which is very much about your kind of well-being it's about work life and about being able to spend the weekend resetting so there's a lot of personal care in there things you can do articles that I've seen things that I want to share and then on Sunday night getting ready for the working week we have just three things which is my second little newsletter that I do which is always just three things and it can be working on something like procrastination, saying no has been one I've done in the past. I think I've, I've been running those since about November now. And they're just really nice tips on a Sunday evening when you're kind of thinking, OK, what have I got, got to get done this week? It's just some really nice things for you to be working on. So if you don't do anything else, think about these three things this week to help you say no, to help you beat procrastination, um, to help you, you know, avoid a to-do list and have something that's more useful instead. 
how to do your not to do list. So that's something again that people can have. I've got a few different lead magnets that I've got on different topics. Again, I can pop a link in for those. And what I'm aiming to do, because again, in the spirit of change and trying new things, later on this year, I'm also going to be running a couple of challenges. And these are very much around productivity and well-being in the workplace. So I've got those to come up. I'll also drop a link to my website because basically you can sign up there. That way you can get all the lovely newsletters. There's resources you can sign up to, but also you'll get a heads up when some of these things are coming online. Because I'm hoping in time, as I start to move away from all my consultancy work and more into this, this will be something I'm doing more. So hopefully we'll have, we'll see courses and membership following. So again, it, it's a model as I'm growing my audience that I've worked on doing too. So yeah, blessed places to sign up at the website because then you get the newsletters, you get the early heads up on everything I'm doing as well, which there will be a lot to come over the next few months. Oh, you have your hands full. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I've learned to say no. <laughs> It, it, it literally is. It's about your values, like you're saying, what's important. Absolutely. <laughs> Amanda, thank you so much for coming and talking to our audience today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. I've really, really enjoyed it.